Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. Today we're going to compare Linux versus Mac OS versus Windows and see who's king of the operating systems. For you. My name's Jeremy, this channel's about tech, go figure. And today we're going to be taking a look at comparing Linux Mac OS and Windows. This video is for someone who is doing research looking for their next operating system, their next computer system for their day-to-day -day use. This means you have some base understanding of what Linux is, Mac OS, and Windows. Full disclosure, I use Linux daily, but in my production environments when I worked in post-production and live production, I use Macs every day. And before that, when I was growing up in an office environment, I used Windows. In the IT days, I worked with Linux as well. So I have a decent understanding of each operating system and their strengths and their weaknesses. And the plan is to do this, to duke this out, to figure out who is the king operating system for you. We have 10 categories to help us find what OS is king. I feel these 10 are what most people are looking for when they're looking for their day-to-day -day computing tasks. We'll let these operating systems kind of duke it out. We'll talk about the merits of each, choose one winner per category, and then we'll move on to the next step. The first category we're gonna be taking a look at is cost. This is a combination between hardware and software because they work together and that's normally a part of your cost analysis when you're choosing which one to use. If you choose Mac, most likely you are gonna be paying the most. That's not always the case. You can get some very premium hardware with Windows as well. You can buy those computers and install Linux on it. But generally speaking, if you had similarly spec'd computers, you would spend the most on a Mac typically. You look at those upgrades, those upgrades are very expensive. Windows has a cost involved with its license to put on any hardware. Uh, that's normally around $100. Linux typically doesn't have a cost, so you're normally installing Linux on a device you already own, or you're purchasing a device and then installing Linux on it. There is another option of purchasing a computer from a hardware maker that uses Linux right from the factory, and that's an option as well. But between the three, on average, you're going to be spending the least amount of money. The best bang for your buck will be Linux. So if you're trying to save money, Linux is definitely the best option. Our second category is ease of use. How easy is it to use the operating system? How easy is it for an 85 year old person to a five year old kid to use the operating system? Windows has the largest group of users out of any user base in the world. So most people have generations of people using Windows. Mac OS has an intentionality of keeping things simple with the user interface, trying to make sure that people can navigate easily. Because of the familiarity factor with Linux, for most people, uh, ease of use may be a little more difficult because of the amount of desktop environments and the way things are done in Linux. Based on that, although you can make Linux very user-friendly, macOS is very user-friendly, but I would say most people, if they saw a Windows computer, would be the most comfortable to use. So we're gonna give ease of use to Windows. The number three category is security and stability. This involves malware and viruses. This involves when you install an application, how stable is the operating system when the environment changes, all of those kinds of things. Really what people are looking for when I get this computer and I set it up with this operating system, Linux, Mac OS or Windows that it is not going to give me problems. I'm going to not have to deal with viruses. I'm not going to have to deal with malware. I'm not going to have to deal with blue screens or or the spinning pinwheel of death, whatever it is. All those kinds of things happen to all computers. But which one does it happen the least to? Windows, because of its large user base, has the most vulnerabilities that are being attacked. A lot of malware is written, a lot of viruses are written for Windows because there's just so many people that can be taken advantage of. I would take Windows out of this race. Now you're dealing with Mac OS and Linux. And although 
macOS is very stable and doesn't have the amount of malware and viruses written for it. I will say that there is more and because their market share is growing, it is becoming more of an issue there. Now, Linux definitely has its vulnerabilities and they are found regularly. But because of the small market share, how many people are actually using Linux, the value of writing some sort of harmful code for a Linux operating system is very small, and there aren't that many vulnerabilities when it comes down to it in the grand scheme of things. I'm just saying there are some. Most of the time, there aren't very many viruses, malware, or attempts to take advantage of those vulnerabilities when they are found. So I will give this to Linux. The number four category is software compatibility. And although Mac has gotten better at this, especially since they moved away from the PPC uh, architecture, moved into x86, and now they're in the Apple Silicon age, if you will, most software you can get to run on Windows more than any other operating system. Linux doesn't necessarily come close, and most Linux users are probably fine with that right? But in general, if you want to run an application, there is a high probability that you're going to be able to run it on Windows. Windows wins this category pretty easily. Category number five is hardware. And what I mean by hardware is not necessarily hardware compatibility. I mean quality of hardware and the integration of the hardware with the operating system. Me describing that, you probably already know what I'm going to say, that this definitely goes to Mac OS. Look, if you've used a Mac, whether it's a laptop or desktop in the past 15 or 20 years, there's a good chance that you know what I'm talking about. First off, we've got Apple Silicon, which is a very efficient, very effective and powerful set to use for a base for a computer. They have really just knocked it out of the park with that. Everything from the monitors, you know, their screens, uh, down to even their trackpads have a premium rugged feel. I owned my first MacBook Pro when I had one. I had it for 10 years. The only reason why I stopped using it is they stopped supporting it at that point. They wouldn't update it anymore. With Windows, you can get some very premium computers, but the consistency of the product line, and yes, it's a narrow product line when it comes to Mac OS, it is very consistent with the high quality of hardware that you get with a Mac, whether it's a laptop or a desktop or an all-in-one or an Apple TV or your headphones or whatever. We'll deal with what I'm alluding to later. But this category, to me, goes to Mac OS. I didn't mention Linux, but pretty much any hardware you can install Linux on, including most Mac hardware. But because of the relationship between OS and hardware are so important, and the fact that Mac OS designs these hardware with their operating system in mind, I'm going to give them the edge over Linux as well. Mac OS wins this category. Category number six is OS support. And what I mean by OS support is how long is that company or organization or community going to support that operating system? The way this can be easily seen is there were some hardware requirements for going from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And so there have been some people that have moved to Linux because their hardware isn't supported. And that seems to be the case even again with some of these Copilot Plus features that they're trying to push with Windows. And so I think Windows kind of gets knocked out here because you can't hold on to a device that long anymore. In the Windows XP days, maybe, but now that's not the case. Mac OS does give excellent operating system support for a very long time. They really do support it. Like I told you, my MacBook Pro that I had, I had for 10 years, and it still worked, by the way. It didn't stop working. They do a great job with that. But in this category, I give the edge to Linux because Linux can work on very old hardware. It can work on new hardware. The OS support is pretty much there for the majority of the time. There are people that may message and comment me on my videos on very old 15 plus year old Lenovo ThinkPads. And it's almost like a badge of honor from a Linux user to be able to use any piece of hardware, whether it's new or old, but especially old, and have a workable, usable, secure operating system. So this category goes to Linux. Category number seven, configurability. What do I mean by configurability? How easy is it to make 
the user interface, and how the operating system works your own. Windows and Mac OS have to work hard because they have a large user base to make sure things are consistent for people to find what they're looking for. The more specialized the user gets, sometimes you need to be able to configure the user interface and the way the operating system is handled a little more specific to your needs. A perfect example of this is a software developer. I know a lot of software developers tend to like using Linux because of the configurability. They can set everything to their keyboard where they <laughs> a key binding to each key they might not even have to lift their fingers off the keyboard both windows and mac uh, set themselves up to be mouse first to pointer first right and you can dig into a terminal or the command line with both windows and mac os but linux if you don't like the desktop environment change it you need a specific kind of kernel to run a specific kind of hardware you can make it happen you just compile it yourself and because of that flexibility and to make it work for specific use cases you can configure it in so many different ways it's understandable why windows or mac os doesn't allow it but if you're looking for configurability and flexibility on how you want to work day to day linux is king in this category for sure category number eight gaming. You probably already know the winner of this, right? And although Linux and macOS have made a lot of improvements, and really Linux even more than macOS, Windows is king in this category. If you want to play a game and you want to ensure that it'll run on your system, Windows system is definitely the way to go. Now, you can run a lot of games in Linux, but because of anti-cheat and some other little quirks that Linux has to deal with, it takes out some of those big titles, especially some large multiplayer titles out of your options to use. Mac OS is trying to get more development for their uh, operating system, but it is behind Linux as well. So for this category, it's an easy win for Windows. Category number nine is privacy. And what I mean by privacy is how much of your personal information is being held by that corporation or organization and is being used or sold or got vulnerabilities that could take advantage of your privacy as well, not just from the operating system, but how things work within the operating system with other applications involved. Windows gets knocked out pretty quick because of the amount of vulnerabilities that are already there that we've discussed earlier. But in order to give targeted ads within different parts of the system, even in the start menu, you get ads. They take information trying to figure out what would be the best ads to feed you so that they can make money. That's how they choose to do it. Mac OS does a good job, but in order to use anything in Mac OS, you need an Apple ID. And they try to keep that as secure as possible. However, there is a more secure way as far as your privacy goes when it comes to your operating system. Linux really does not have a know your customer kind of thing. They really don't collect that. Now you can choose to, you can choose to opt in to something if you want to help them develop the software. And that's great. And it's very easy, but if you don't want to send any information, you really don't have to and they are not going to know who's using it and if that matters to you if privacy matters to you this is definitely a no-brainer you should use linux linux wins this category and category number 10 is ecosystem an ecosystem has become a very important part of people's computing for day-to-day -day tasks. It has become more and more important over the last 10 years, more than we ever thought it would be. When you have a smartphone that you take pictures on and you have headphones that connect a certain way and you have a device connected to a TV and you have your laptop and you have all of these things and getting them set up and talking to each other is something that is very important for people. Now with all three operating systems, they all have their way of being connected together. Whether you're in a Windows environment, you can get your phone to talk to your laptop and, and those kinds of things. It's totally possible and, and usable. Linux, you can do the same thing. I'm recording with my Android phone that's connected to my Linux laptop. So it's totally possible to have that interconnectability. But there was some configuration and setup involved. When it comes to Apple, 
that's already baked in. You have a new set of headphones, put it close to the device and it'll see it and you'll connect and it'll get you going. You want to connect to that Apple TV? It's super easy. You want to feed the audio from the TV to your headphones, your Apple AirPods? You can. It's super easy. It's already baked in. Ecosystem, when it comes to being pre-baked into the way the operating system works with the hardware, with the software, in different ways, Mac OS wins this category hands down. All right, so we're tallying this up. And if you just were to take win for win, the Linux guy said Linux wins because it has more category wins. But hold on, that's not fair because obviously some of these categories matter way more to you than they do to someone else. For instance, I believe a lot of Mac users value ecosystem and the quality of hardware as two of the most important things in their daily life in choosing using Mac OS. And honestly, they're willing to pay more for it. They only care about those two categories. And that's fine. Probably if you are a gamer, you're like, well, of course, I'm going to use Windows. That's what I'm going to use. That makes the most sense. It's a no brainer. And if you're a Linux user, you might be like, well, of course, my privacy is the most important thing or configurability is the most important thing. That's what I want. And that's what I want you to see. The King OS is really what is defined for you. And a way for you to find it, if you're not sure yet, is to take the top five categories for you and rank those categories. So for example, my top five categories is this. Configurability, stability and security, cost, software compatibility, and hardware. So those are my top five things. And so I would give my number one thing, the number one thing that I thought was most important, I would give that five points from the next one, four, three, two, one. And I add that together for all the operating systems. And that will tell me which one really is king for me. Now in this example that I just gave, Linux is still what is most important to me. I was able to make some software compatibility things work for me that may not have been an option if I absolutely had to use something like the Adobe Suite. But I made DaVinci Resolve work for me and made software compatibility a non-issue. Everything else I could find on Linux. That doesn't mean in these categories as well that something can't be taken care of. For instance, Mac OS is super easy to use. The KDE desktop environment in Linux, super easy to use right? So there's plenty of things that you can find to make that happen. But who is king for you? Well, for me, it's Linux. That's what I choose to use. I love using it. I really appreciate it. And I've been able to make it work for me. I have a nice newer Asus ProArt 16 laptop that I put Linux on. I get some good hardware. I get great stability and security. I get good ease of use software compatibility for what I need daily. I'm not a gamer. It doesn't matter to me. You know, the ecosystem, I've made it work. I found some options that work for me. I love KDE Connect if you're a Linux user, but that's how I think you should look at this. Not that Linux won five and that's just unfair. Mac should have won these or Windows should have won that. Just look at it. And I guarantee you, most people who use Windows, they're going to probably look at this list and score pretty high with Windows. Or maybe they really are attracted to the ecosystem of Mac and uh, the cost is a prevention, or maybe there is a software compatibility issue that is keeping them from a Mac. And that's where you're kind of deciding, is this worth it? And I believe any of those can make it work. But if you ask me, Linux is king. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. Like and subscribe, please. And let's continue to do this, and I'll see you next time.